a year ago, my race was very kind of went into limbo. And due to personal health issues, I didn't know what was going to happen to me. And when hard times fell for me and my family, it was this company that gave me an opportunity. And you people that welcomed me with open arms, and from the bottom of my heart, I thank you. Yeah. 
Corner Survival Matchup. Alex Shelley, Matt Seidel, Nigel McGinnis, and as you said, Delirious going at it. Looks like Delirious is going to kick things off against Alex Shelley here. Now, when that opening bell sounds, Delirious just something clicks or, or goes wrong, however you want to look at it, in his head, and he just loses it. But it's going to be Alex Shelley and Delirious to start things off. Bruce Bray, the official assigned to this matchup. Of course, Alex Shelley has in his corner the leader of the embassy, Prince Nano. While Matt Seidel in his corner, the lovely Daisy Hayes. Seidel, the newest member of Generation Next, as this feud between the embassy and Generation Next continues here. We saw that big six man last night. Matt Seidel's team scored the victory in Seidel by virtue of his efforts in that matchup, helping his team on the victory, earned a permanent spot in Generation Next. Shelly going to the mask, able to get the advantage, grabbing at the strands of the mask there of Delirious, and able to lock in that head scissor. And we are here in Chicago, and it is Punk's last stand, the final chapter. CM Punk and Cole Cabana tonight going at it for the last time. CM Punk in Ring of Honor. Well, that, I'm not going to fall for that one again. This is not, oh, yeah, it's his last show. I've heard that a million times, Lenny. I swear this is going to be it. Honest. Delirious. Changing it up on Alex Shelley into the wrist lock. I'll believe it when I see it, okay? You're going to see it tonight. Him and Colt Cabana are going to go at it for the go. last time. There you go, huh? Picks up the there leg of Delirious. Go. Alex Shelley looking to tie the masked man up. Delirious in a knot here. Shelly turning him over. Just leaving him there. And he's, he's got the enough. flag. He's got the flag and just drapes it over Delirious. How insulting. Burying Delirious under the flag of Ghana. Crowd not appreciative of the newest member of the embassy. Delirious calls through and connects with the clothesline. Off the ropes. Another. All fired up. Bam! The leaping lariat. Crowd all over the all over Delirious here. They were behind him 100 percent Just drops Shelly and locks in the camel clutch. Look at the guns on that guy. Showing off the power. But Alex Shelley has maneuvers his way back to his feet. And I don't think Delirious realizes it. And he's caught with a belly to back and just drops right on the back of his head. He just blows snot on Delirious. How insulting. Still has that flag. Nigel McGinnis in the corner makes the tag. Of course, Nigel McGinnis still uh, with that rivalry with classic Colt Cabana. They will continue their war next week at, in Morristown, New Jersey, as it will be a matchup where Coach Cabana will select the stipulation. And we won't really know what it is until the night of that show, and the only clue that he's given is that he's going to uh, use a few tricks that he learned on Nigel's old stomping grounds against him. Cabana back from his trip to England and Europe, where he says he learned a few things from What's Nigel McGuinness. Delirious is trying to oh, utilize the British style right there, and now it's Nigel utilizing some of Delirious's tactics. Delirious not too appreciative of it. Gimmick infringement, he says. And tags in that side down. You see the newest member of Generation Next. And there's the Daisy haze Hayes. with that loaded flower. You know, what the tennis racket was to Jim Cornette, the flower is to Daisy Hayes. Nice arm drag by side out, and another, he is lightning quick. Elevated up and over to the floor. Able to land on his feet somewhat there. Right back up to the apron comes Seidel. Springboard missile drop kick to the back sends McGinnis to the floor. There's Daisy on the outside with that flower. Seidel gonna fly, baseball sliding, McGinnis gets out of the way. Seidel very quick, getting back in the ring himself. Matt Seidel, one of the most agile wrestlers on the ROH Look roster him, today. Huh? With some beautiful aerial him. offense. Hey, he's such a big, huh? And is gonna look to slow things down here and try and use his size and strength advantage to take the quicker man down. Nice roll up here by Seidel. Pulls back over and cover. Again, only a two count. There you see the quickness of Seidel. And drop kicks the knee as he caught Nigel. Standing moves up across the chest, puts the leg. Matt Seidel gets great height on that maneuver. 
And you see Nana on the outside talking to Shelly. Of course, Jade Chung not in the corner of the embassy as Prince Nana has her on duties cleaning bathrooms at his palace in Ghana. You said duties. Duties in the bathroom. Come on! Try Come on, stay focused on the match. The monkey flip out of the corner. Sends him all the way across the ring. Seidel struggling to his feet, makes the tag into McGinnis. Hey, you Jezebel! Stay in your corner! Huh? Not on the outside, screaming at Daisy Hayes. Call your kicker. You don't want to mess with the Hayes. She's a great athlete in her own right. Certainly is. McGinnis tags in Shelly. Keeping Delirious grounded. And Shelly now just measuring him for the boot right to the side of the face. The lizard face? I don't know. So I hear. Speculation. Hoover retract. Shelly going to work on Delirious now. Methodical is Alex Shelly with the offense here. Sends him off the ropes. Running back elbow takes Delirious off his feet. Delirious needs to mount some offense here. As uh, he's impressed in his ROH outings, but he has yet to pick up a victory in a Ring of Honor contest. Victory's all important here when it comes to get, to get, excuse me, future bookings with the Ring of Honor. Sooner or later, you've got to put up a win. Submission cinched in by Alex Shelley in the center of the ring. Referee Bruce Gray checking on the condition of the mask back. Shelley has him all tied up in knots, wrenching on the neck. Crowd getting behind Delirious, covered now by Shelley, only a two count again. Shelley looks to be getting a little frustrated here. Snap mares him over. Tags in McGinnis as he drives the chin right across the throat of Delirious, who then is hit with an elbow by McGinnis. Of course, not only do we see the Matt Seidel, Alex Shelley uh, rivalry coming into play in this matchup, but later on in tonight's card, it will be Austin Aries taking on Jimmy Rave as the Embassy Generation Next series of matches continues here in Chicago Ridge. Nice drop kick from Delirious. Takes a swat at Matt Seidel. Forearm shot sends him to the floor. Delirious now climbing to the top. McGinnis in the center of the ring on his knees, struggling up to his feet. Side elbow able to get back up to the apron and takes down Delirious and tags himself in. Caught with a boot by McGinnis though. Going for a scoop and a slam. Seidel slips out, sends him to the corner, ducks the clothesline. McGinnis catches himself in the ropes and comes over the clothesline and turns Matt Seidel inside out. Rizal going for the cover, but Delirious with the leg drop off the top. Super, super kick. kick from Alex Shelley. Spinning kick from Seidel knocks down Shelley. It is breaking down here. Going to work on the arm of Matt Seidel. Angel McGinnis likes to target that particular body part on his opponent. Black's cover there only gets a two count. Daisy Hayes firing up the crowd here. Seidel, hard to the corner, catches McGinnis coming in. Going for the swing, inverted DDT, Nigel counters. As in position for that Tower of London, if he can get it, Delirious with a shoulder block to the midsection. Shelly with a point tag and a drop kick to the face of Matt Seidel. Matt Seidel never saw him coming. Nice European uppercuts from Nigel McGinnis. But this time, Shelly trying to get the backslide. Step up ends in Gary. Doesn't take him off his feet though. Nigel hanging on. Golden Gate swing right on his head. Hooks the leg. Looking for shell shot. Turns him over for it. But no, Nigel counters out. Hammerlock and then drives a form to the back. It only gets two. Sends Shelly hard to the canvas. So much for what it looked like a little bit of an alliance there between Alex Shelly and Nigel McGinnis as this four quarters match is now breaking down every man for himself in there. Blind tag by Delirious on Shelly. Sends Nigel into the corner. Double knees. Drop tall, face 
successful at turnbuckle. Delirious with the panic attack on both Nigel and Alex Shelley. Drags McGinnis out of the corner and a cover doesn't hook the leg. Two and a half again. This match, very important for all four men. They all need a victory. Sidell goes soaring. Delirious up top. Leaps over McGinnis. Somersault through, runs into the corner. He's caught with a big boot. Tower of London. And he gets it. He just spiked it right on top of his head. One, two, and three. Nigel McGuinness wins it. As Alex Shelley and Matt Seidel continue to go at it on the floor, this war between the embassy and Generation Next is far from over. followed in the center of the Hello, ring. Chicago! The vastly popular, especially here in his hometown, Chicagoland area, Ace Steel to take on Chad Collier. Of course, Ace Steel, the trainer of CM Punk and Colt Cabana. Big night, big emotional night for not only CM Punk making his final appearance, Lenny Leonard, I believe that when I see it, but you know, it's for Ace Steel as well. Seeing uh, his students mature in the ring and uh, improve as, as the weeks go by. And he finally gets to see CM Punk move up to the next level and uh, say goodbye to a promotion that he has done so much in. Yeah, gotta be a tremendous, tremendous night for A. Steele. Coming off a big win last night in Dayton in that four corner survival match. Over delirious match striker in Sterling Keenan. Chad Collier not so fortunate last night as he and Nigel McGuinness fell in their quest to become ROH World Tag Team Champions. But right now, it's going to be Ace Steel, the proud papa, if you will, of CM Punk and Colt Cabana going at it right here one-on-one. -on -one. Chad Collier not so fortunate in his last trip to the barber shop. It's a horrible moment. Side headlock takeover by Chad Collier out of the Maleko School. Student of the game for sure is Collier. Both men showing their quickness there, unable to get the advantage. Either one, they're both back to their feet. It's going to be quite a matchup of two veterans here. Two guys who've been around all age for a while, looking for that one big win to kind of catapult them into that title contention. Like we said, Collier had a match last night in Dayton. He and Nigel McGuinness came up just short against B.J. Whitmer and Jimmy Jacobs. But you got to think, both these guys are looking for singles gold here if they can get their hands on it. And this match here, a win in this match, would be a big step in that direction for either one of these guys. And much like the CM Punk Colt Cabana matchup, uh, no better place for it to happen than right here in the Chicagoland area. Same time for Ace Steel. If he's going to get that big victory that puts himself into title contention, here in Chicago is the right place to do it. Controlling Collier right there in the center of the ring with that hammerlock. Now it switches to a side headlock. Ducks underneath, arm drag and twist. He's got that wrist controlled. Hard get behind Ace Steel. Nice reversal by Collier into a full Nelson there. 
Ace trying to break it. All the power there by Ace. Into a full Nelson on his own. Now Chad Collier trying to work his way out of it. These men so evenly matched, about the same height, same size. And about equal in experience as well. Back to the full Nelson goes Ace Steele. Collier able to try and, trying to make it to the ropes there to break the hole. Ace Steele doing a good job of dragging him back to the center, but finally Collier able to get his feet up on the ropes. Forces the break and he gets dumped right on the back of his head. Well, he released the hold. The referee told him break, and he did. Good sportsmanship there by A. Steele. Breaking on the referee's count. And Chad Collier's not happy about it. He'll punch you in the face, you punk. Obviously, this crowd solidly behind A. Steele, a hometown boy. Chad Collier still joined with the fans here at ringside. A. Steele tries to rally the troops. He's got some of the ladies behind him here in Chicago that's probably With that hairdo? I don't know why. Whoever did that mohawk for him really messed up the bottom portion of that. Back to the match. He steal with the leg. Takes him down. Keeping that leg trapped. Controlling that leg. He steal looking to the crowd for approval here. Drives him. Forearm and ribs right down into that leg. Look at the face of Chad Collier, the paint etched all over it. Sticking through, twisting away on the leg. Yeah! Just putting pressure down on that leg as he breaks it across his own. And drives the knee of Collier down into the canvas. Collier trying to turn to his stomach and eliminate some of the pressure of that hold. Rolled through him, caught with a chop, he fires right back with one of his own. Trading shots in the middle of the ring. Finally a side headlock. Ace is sent to the ropes, up and over. Leap frog by Collier, steals somersaults through. Ducks the Enziguri. Steel avoids the elbow. Collier avoids the elbow of Steel. Blocks the leg Lariat. Standoff in the center of the ring. Two very well matched athletes. And the fans letting him hold. Collier may be getting a little frustrated there. Shoves it. A steal. One more time. Off the road, shoulder tackle. Neither man going down. Ace holding his ground. One more time. Standing tall. Gonna try it again. No, this time with the forearm. He faked Ace out. And there he gets the leg, Larry. Down goes Ace Steel. Put the leg, man. Only gets two. Stopping away on the fingers. Hard chop to the chest by Collier. He's got Steele in the corner. Of course, Ace Steele was part of that wild Chicago Ridge street fight at Duck Before Dishonor 2, Part 2, as he teamed up with CM Punk to take on Dan Hoff and BJ Whitmer. One of the most violent matches in ROH history. Second double stomp to the midsection of Ace Steele by Collier. Knocking the wind out of him. Again, only a two count. Didn't hook the leg. Going to work on the midsection. Stomach pull. Ace fights his way out of the hold. And now it's a Greco-Roman knuckle lock trying to power the shoulders of Steele down to the canvas. Hulk Turner right on top of the action. Only two. Steele able to get that shoulder up. Collier again trying to drive the hands down. Bridges up. Keep his shoulders off the canvas. Strength by Ace Steel there. Collier trying to break that bridge, but Ace right back up. Bridging with the body weight of Chad Collier on his chest. And Collier. that time Collier basically crotched himself. And now Ace crawling up the turnbuckles, crawling up the ropes. Legs wrapped around the head into the head scissor. Nice show of strength there by Ace Steel, able to walk up the ropes. Tremendous upper body strength by Ace Steel. Shoulder tackle, no, either man goes down. And now it's Collier this time holding his ground as Ace tries to knock him down. And Ace fakes him out and stops on the foot. And a big lariat takes Collier down. Pulling him back up to his feet, forearm strike from Ace Steel. Shop in the corner. Irish whip out of the corner by Steele. Collier hits the buckle hard. 
Castillo charging in, drop kick right to the face. Collier with nowhere to go. Staggers out of the corner to a belly to back. That combination of maneuvers from Ace Steel, but Collier able to kick out. Steele didn't hook the leg, only able to get a two count there. So he set him up for a suplex here, but Collier fights his way. Drops him right across the top rope. Forearm shot sends him to the floor. Collier looking like he wants to dive here. He's got Steele in a bad way on the floor. Puts on the brakes. And comes flying right into a shot from Ames. Trying to come up with a double axe handle. He's caught with a chop. Giving these fans some chops up close and personal. You know he's a Chicago and he's here for the people. Collier dishing it back out. Caught with a right hand. It staggers Collier, but he gets back up. Oh, inadvertent elbow there. Hit a security guard. Uh, but that's one of the schools from the Harley Dressing School who get some extra work on show dates doing some security and as Ace reared back for that punch, he connected basically with a back elbow. The referee and Ace both checking on the condition of, well, it happens from time to time. Completely inadvertent, obviously, but wait a second, Collier's got a chair, what's he doing? Ace, where's the fucking people? Ace trying to get some, trying to get some attention for, this, for the security guard. And Collier, oh, wraps the chair upside the head of Ace Steel. That chair just folded over his head. Referee on the floor checking on the condition of that security oh, guard. Come on. Chad Collier taking advantage of the situation. We've got a security guard down, and, and Ace and, and the referee just trying to check on his condition. He's not a part of this match, and, and Collier taking advantage. Well, we said early on somebody was going to need to win this match to put themselves in title contention. And obviously, Chad Collier willing to do anything and everything to get that win as he just waffles Ace Steel in the head with a chair. Yeah, but we said earlier just how great ring technicians these guys are. And oh, I think it's been just an open. They can get the job done inside the ring. What do you have to use a chair for? Ace Steel, blood is just pouring out of the head of Ace Steel from that chair. Deep, deep laceration. Go for that Collier Cloverleaf. Oh, Ace Steele's almost unconscious here. There's no way he's getting out of this. Trying to turn the man over. Oh, look at the blood just pouring out of the head of Ace Steele. Come on, Ace, talk to me. Come on, Ace, talk to me here. Shut up!
battle between the factions of the Embassy and Generation Next continues in this singles contest between former ROH World Champion Austin Aries and Jimmy Ray. And the fans here in Chicago Ridge letting Jimmy Rave hear it. And what exactly they want to see Austin Aries do to Jimmy Rave tonight. Heck, we almost saw that happen last time here in Chicago Ridge at Nowhere to Run as CM Punk delivered that top of the cage superplex to Jimmy Rave to win the match and the feud. And it's Austin Aries with a big slap right upside the face of Jimmy Rave. Rave charging out of the corner, drop toe hold from Aries, ducks the clothesline with a waist lock, takes him right off his feet, floats over, riding Jimmy Rave there and locks in that front chance he does the former champ. The rivalry between these two factions has really intensified as of late. Of course, it all can be traced back to Austin Aries rejecting Prince Nana's offer of a contract at Escape from New York. Ever since the embassy has been on Austin Aries and Generation Next in general. It was Jimmy Ray connecting with the chair shot on Austin Aries at the homecoming to cost him that tag team matchup against the embassy. And then just last night in that six-man matchup that earned Matt Seidel his spot in Generation Next, it was Austin Aries pinning Jimmy Ray after the 450. So the crown jewel trying to get a little bit of revenge here against the leader of Generation Next. Crown jewel of the embassy. The stealer of the Styles Clash. Or is it the inventor of the Rave Clash? I always get confused. Yes. Rave getting back inside the ring. Very cautious. The last time he charged in full steam at Austin Aries and taken off his feet quickly. A little more cautious this time as he sizes up the former world champ. Big boot to the midsection and a right hand right to the bridge of the nose. Irish whip by Rave. Aries up and over as Rave comes in. Somersaults and springboards a back elbow as he catches Rave coming in. And then a deep Japanese arm drag making it two. And the former champ is clicking on all cylinders here. Holding on to that arm and keeping it within his grasp as the fans of Chicago Ridge show their appreciation for the ability of Austin Aries. Referee Todd Sinclair checking on the condition of Jimmy Rave as Austin Aries Keeps him down on the canvas. Fans getting behind Aries here. Rave with a handful of hair driving Aries to the ropes. Sends him off, reversal by Aries. Nana grabs the foot of Jimmy Rave to stop his momentum. But he's caught with a baseball slide drop kick and Nana rolls to the guard ramp. Twisting corkscrew press, hooks the leg, only a two count. He brought up, but Wade gets the knees up right into the chin of Aries. Good thinking on Jimmy Ray's part, a trademark combination of Aries, that twisting body press into the Quebrada, he got the knees up, and now it's Jimmy Ray with Austin Aries pulling him toward the ring post to do more damage. Just driving the rib cage of Austin Aries right into that post. Finish him up! Not a screaming at Rave to finish him here. On a back to his feet. He was able to save his man, but paid the price physically himself with that baseball slide drop kick. Rave continues the assault on the rib cage of Austin Aries and then follows it up with a right hand again, right to the bridge of the nose. Rave driving the face and the rib cage right to the mat and then a boot again right to the midsection as Jimmy Rave is concentrating his offense on the rib cage of Austin Aries. Aries kicking out, staying in this thing. You gotta think that AJ Styles still has Jimmy Rave on his mind. He's gonna be back soon and Rave is gonna have to face him. AJ's furious after that street fight at the homecoming where Rave won after interference, which allowed him to hit that Rave clash on AJ Styles. Obviously that feud far, far from over as is the one between Generation Next and the Embassy as the crown jewel. Jimmy Rave, nice northern lights with a bridge. Again, only a two count. Aries able to kick out. Jimmy Rave! Just well, one shout of Jimmy Rave brings these fans to a chorus of boos. But he is in command of the matchup, working over Aries here, looking for the abdominal stretch. Again, isolating his attack on the midsection and the rib cage of Austin Aries. And maneuvering his way toward the ropes. 
potentially to put them to his use. Or perhaps Prince Nana from the floor. Todd Sinclair right there checking on Aries, see if he wants to give it up. You see Nana working his way to the side. And that's exactly what they're trying to do. He's using those ropes for leverage. He's using his manager for leverage. And out of the line of sight of the referee. Todd Sinclair right there trying to check on Aries, but out of position when it comes to seeing Jimmy Ray. Finally, he sees the hand on the top rope. Forcing him to break the hole by kicking at the hand and allowing Aries to hip toss his way out. Off the ropes he came, and one knee to the midsection put a stop to Aries offense. Come on! Covering a two count after he drove the knee into the rib cage. Look at the face of Austin Aries, grabbing at the ribs. Tonight a very big night for Generation Next, as later on this evening it will be Roderick Strong getting a big chance taking on Matt Hardy in his final ROH appearance. More time, Jimmy Rave drives the knee to the midsection, hooks the leg, he might have him. And only a two count, Todd Sinclair right there. Here he's showing his tenacity here. And the fans really getting on Jimmy Rave's case. One of the most hated men here in Chicago. Aries firing back, trying to work his way out of the corner. Left hand connects with the chin of Jimmy Rave. Hard chop from Aries. Rave fires another boot to the midsection. Forearm shot. Rocks Aries in the corner. Snap mares him out. Trying to keep Aries grounded. Down in the center of the ring. Wraps legs around the body. Body scissors apply. You see the expression of pain on the face of the former ROH World Champ. Again, Jimmy Rave concentrating on not just the ribs here of Austin Aries, but also depriving him of oxygen. The fans getting behind Aries is driving an elbow into the knee, trying to free himself. Doing his best to work his way out of the hole. And he finally does break free. Rave the first one back to his feet. Fires a clubbing forearm to the back. Setting up for gonorrhea if he can hit it. No! Countered in mid-swing. Oh, and he only gets two. Playing the bear hug on air. He's trying to wear him down. Much like the body scissors, applies the same kind of pressure around the midsection of Airy. Aries actually with maybe a smart defensive move here by dropping down to his knees. It's not allowing Jimmy Rave to drive that shoulder into the rib cage. Unable to get the full effect of that maneuver as Aries now slapping away at the head, trying to free himself. Slapping along with the crowd, finally able to force the break. Right hand from Jimmy Rave. Hard forearm shot from Aries. They're just trading shots now in the center. Big forearm from Aries, and again, getting fired up. And Rave goes to the eye, off the ropes, close line by Aries. Aries getting his second win, he can feel this. The crowd getting behind him. How much damage was done to those ribs? You saw him a grimace as he grabbed at his ribs. Oh, he's definitely favoring those ribs, but he's keeping the fight coming. Series of back elbows. Power drive elbow here. Gets all of it. Only gets two, Rave, last split second, getting that shoulder up, and on a chair in hand, ready to jump in there to save his man if need be. Referee, what the hell do you think is going on here? Stay Call the wrestling match. And it's called Austin Aries, bringing the fight to Jimmy Ray. Ray begging off in the corner, catches Aries coming in. Again, another shot to the rib cage. Jimmy Ray concentrating on the ribs of Aries. Elevates him up and over, but Ray right, right back in. Aries and connects with an elbow. And Aries now comes charging with that drop kick. Cover! No! No, only two. Nowhere for Rave to go in the corner. Couldn't get out of the way. He was caught with that drop kick right on the chin by Aries. Aries looking to follow up. Let's put the brain buster to use as a setup for the 450 splash. But Rave drives him into the corner. Moves out of the way. Sunset flip. 
No, only two. Crucifix bomb. He gets it. No. Ray able to drive Aries down and gets a near fall himself. As he was going for that crucifix bomb, Rave used his leverage to drive Aries back first down to the canvas. Yeah, Rave in midair shifted his weight just a little bit and was able to drive his shoulders right into the rib cage again of Austin Aries and able to get a two count. Again, trading back and forth they go. Open hand strike from Aries. He's getting weak. Get him. Series of forearms now. Aries getting the better of that exchange off the ropes. Ducks the roaring elbow does Raven. He catches him with a spear. Hooks away. More high impact to the midsection of Austin Aries right there, but he's able to kick out. Jimmy Rave doing all sorts of damage, I think, to the midsection of Austin Aries. He might have broken ribs here as Rave has been all over him since the opening bell. Works his way out of that position, saving his midsection for more damage. Looking for the Brain Buster, no. Standing switch. O'Connor roll. Jimmy Rave holds on. And kicks away at the leg. Maybe Ray was looking for that running knee. Hits him with a basement drop kick. Takes him right off his feet. Looking maybe for the brain buster here. And he gets it. Slow to cover. Two, two, two. Oh, two and three quarters. He gets that shoulder up. You got to think if there wasn't so much damage done to the ribs, he might have been able to cover him just a little bit quicker, and that may have been the difference. Trying to pull him toward the corner, but... Is the 450 splash a good idea when you've got injured ribs? Willing to put his body on the line to try to get the victory here. Aries up top. Oh, I thought that was it. He meant nothing but the knees of Jimmy Rave, but he still was able to kick out as Rave rolled him over into a pinning predicament. Fans behind Aries chanting his name. But it might be all but over right here as Jimmy Ray drove the knees right up into the ribs. He's calling for the rave clash right here. But Aries able to drive Jimmy Rave into the corner. With that softened up midsection, the rave clash could be all that it takes to put away Austin Aries tonight. Sets him up top. What could Aries have in mind off the ropes? Climbing up to the second himself. For a superplex here. Maybe a second rope brain buster? Aries was shot. Or Ray Jimmy Ray was shot. Breaks. Maybe looking for the rave clash off the rope. Oh, no way. No way! That's what he's got in mind. Aries trying to fight his way out of it. Clapping the legs around the head of Jimmy Ray. Strength of the neck muscles by Aries, able to hold himself up like that. Rave still up top, sunset flip. Aries sits down, hooks the legs. He got him. Austin Aries with a big victory for Generation Next in their series against the Embassy.
it's like B.I.G. is I'm the greatest of all times I'ma say it just like I lead it Inside the ring. Referee Jason Harding has his hands full with this one. And Homicide begging for mercy. And Loki just blindsiding Samoa Joe. And now both Loki and Homicide going to work on Samoa Joe. Homicide able to take Joe's attention away for just a split second, allowing Loki to connect from behind. Double clothesline takes the big man off his feet. Of course, this match signed after what took place last night in Dayton. It was a singles matchup between Jay Lethal and Low Key. Homicide hitting the ring after the matchup, and they double teamed him until it was Matt Hardy making the save. Tonight, Jay Lethal and his mentor in many ways, Samoa Joe, forming a team once again. This matchup, a rematch of sorts from that impromptu main event tag team match at Manhattan Mayhem back on May the 7th. Key with a cover after that double suplex, only able to get a one count. He said Matt Hardy made the save last night for Jay Lethal. Lethal returning the favor in the matchup between Hardy and Homicide, allowing Matt Hardy to get the win. As Mo Key connects with a drop kick to the back of the head of Samoa Joe, hooks the leg, only a two count. Of course, the first meeting between these two teams at Manhattan Mayhem came to a conclusion with one of the most vicious maneuvers in ROH history, the cop killer double stop combination on Jay Lethal, put him on the sidelines doing severe damage to his neck. But ever since, he has been fighting. They tried to break that kid's neck, but the tenacity instilled in him by his mentor Samoa Joe willed him back before he probably should have been back and he is here to try and take revenge on the Rottweiler. He's here to try to finally get a pinfall victory or a submission victory against Loki or Homicide. Plant Samoa Joe with the DDT does Homicide as the Rottweilers are in control. Loki just stepping across the throat of Samoa Joe. Homicide has the ref distracted. Jay Lethal there doing a little more harm than good as he's trying to come to his partner's aid, but just allowing Loki to do damage behind the referee's back. Letting his emotions get the best of him. Of course, Lethal has been close to victories 
uh, against both low key and homicide. Against key at death before dishonor three and a very heated matchup against homicide at Escape from New York, where Lethal bled for the first time in his career during a wrestling match. Hard chop to the chest of Joe. What history between these two going back for the first Glory by Honor where Samoa Joe made his ROH debut against Loki. And we got Glory by Honor 4 coming up during the month of September. It shows just how, how long these two have had a rivalry in Ring of Honor. This is a feud between guys that go back a long way. And like I said earlier, they absolutely hate each other. Chopping away at the chest of Joe, but not backing down. European uppercut and Key staying on his feet. Fires a kick, may have been a little low. Could have caught the inside of the five, but it might have been low there. Pulling Joe into his own corner as the notorious 187 tags himself in. Hard right hand to the rib cage of Samoa Joe. Homicide now going to work. Hard chop to the chest. Homicide and Samoa Joe, no stranger to one another in our OH competition. Belly to belly over the head release, suplex from Joe. A maneuver that Homicide likes to put to use. Jay Lethal tags in and fires a right hand in the corner. Sends Homicide off. Tries to go up and over. Lethal puts on the brakes and nails him with a close on. One step ahead. High back drop from Lethal. Over here. A nice flurry by Lethal right there. Needs to stay on the man. Keep it coming. Back heel kick. Connects. Right on the chin. Again, calling for the ref for the cover. Not hooking the leg on that cover. And Loki with a quick shot to the eyes of Jay Lethal. Trying to put a stop to what he had. Homicide up to his feet first. Snap bears him over. Drives the boot to the back. Face lock, maybe looking for a suplex here. Trying to block the attempt, Jay Lethal. Again blocks. Right hand to the midsection, a homicide by Lethal. Chopping away at the chats. And going to the eyes of Lethal. Getting very frustrated. He's trying his best to just out-wrestle the Rottweilers, but they keep taking shortcuts. They go to the eyes and it's, it's infuriating Lethal but there's nothing he can do about it. Now two handfuls of hair and just taking him over by the hair. And in comes Key once again. Again, he's got Lethal by the hair here. Just yanking him up and driving him to the canvas by the hair. Cover here by Key. Moa Joe in trying to break up the count. And now it's the Rottweilers pitching Lethal out to the floor to do more damage. Referee tied up with Samoa Joe as Homicide drops the elbow off the apron and down to the floor. Homicide joined with the fans in the front row here. Big right hand knocks the eye of Jay Lethal. Against the barricade, chop right across the chest. Listen to the impact of those blows from Homicide on the outside. Covered by low key. Two count again, Lethal able to get his shoulder up. Of course, the match last night in Dayton between Key and Lethal uh, went to a no contest as they let their hatred and their, their uh, attitudes get the best of themselves in the midst of the matchup, put their hands on the referee, utilized the referee to their advantage, uh, took the action to the floor and into the bleachers. Referee tried to reason with them to bring it back inside the ring. And it just came down to the fact the referee had to throw the match out because they got a little bit too aggressive and it turned into more of a fight than a wrestling match. Yeah, he had lost all control of that match. They were all over the building in Dayton. A little more control here. Homicide driving the knee into the midsection of Jay Lethal. Now putting the bad mouth, trying to draw Samoa Joe into the ring. And he did just that. Oh, Samoa Joe wants, wants at the Rottweilers. And he's got, they've got Jay Lethal cut off from the side of the ring that Samoa Joe could make that tag. He wants in that ring. Just think of the wars between Joe and the Rottweilers, like the slap exchange with Key at the second anniversary show. Absolutely brutal, the wars between these four men and Homicide taking over on Jay Lethal here. He said they got him cut off from his corner, isolating him and going to work. 
Lethal trying to struggle his way to his feet. Drives the elbow to the midsection. Homicide able to plant the knee to the stomach. Beats him to the punch, drives the knee into the midsection again, keeping him away from Samoa Joe. And Joe stepping through the ropes, he wants in there. Homicide is just baiting him into the ring. I mean, who could ever forget when Homicide threw that fireball in the face of Samoa Joe at Reborn Stage 1 in Minnesota? There's so much history between these four men. Nothing he and Homicide won't do to try and put these guys out of this business. Tried to break the neck of Lethal, tried to blind Samoa Joe with a fireball. And just a stare down between Joe and Key. And who could ever forget Key's return at Reborn Completion? Big forearm across the back, Lethal spitting in the face of Samoa Joe. Referee trying to keep him out of the ring as the Rottweilers double teaming Jay Lethal. Bulldog off the shoulders of Low Key. That's got to be it right there. No, Joe in to break it up. And now it's Homicide and Samoa Joe staring each other down. Again, putting his hands on the referee. They better be careful. In danger of getting this match thrown out as well. And Loki applying the body scissors on the midsection of Jay Lethal. He's in a great deal of pain in this hole. Needs to make that tag, get Joe the legal man in the ring. Also has that one arm trapped in there. You see Lethal finally struggling to get that hand free. See if he can make his way to the ropes and force a break. Homicide though slapping the hand of Lethal away as he tried to make it to the ropes. Lethal again going to the ropes and Homicide slapping the hand away. Enabling low key to break things up. Oh, so Joe is, Joe. He's seen enough. He needs to put a stop to this. He, he's, he was almost able to reach the ropes and Homicide just slapping away at the hand. Come on. He rolls to the corner, no tag. The referee didn't see it. They made the switch anyway. Homicide's got Lethal off. Pile driver! He just spiked Jay Lethal on that bad neck. I don't blame Samoa Joe for getting involved without making the tag just yet. With the, with the tactics of the Rottweilers put to use, it's completely justified in my opinion. As now they're double teaming Lethal. Just bowling him over with a double shoulder tag. And again, trying to just lure Samoa Joe into the ring to tie up the referee once again. Key with the cover. Two count, Lethal kicks out. Again, Homicide taunting Joe in the corner. Look at him pacing on the apron. Just chomping at the bit, dying to get his hands on either one of these guys. Oh, what a chop from Loki. Just about caved the chest of Jay Lethal in. Places him up top. Hung up in the tree low. Hanging on to the hair all the while. He's trying to punish Jay Lethal here. And Loki likes to put that double stop to use from this position. But he does a sit up, gets out of harm's way. Can Jay Lethal capitalize? He does! But can he make the tag? He needs to make the tag. Referee applies the double count. Both men are down. Lethal is close to his core. He just has to roll over. Samoa Joe is right there. Look at him trying to make the tag. Loki makes the tag. Samoa Joe's in. Up and over goes Homicide. And Loki as well. Samoa Joe, a house of fire here. Has Homicide up on the shoulders. Kicks away Key, Death Valley driver. Two and three quarters. Powerball. Gets two, turns it right into the step over toe with the face lock. The STF, right in the center of the ring. Low key climbing the top, Homicide is nowhere to go. Double stomp to the back, breaks the hole. Homicide was finished right there, but Low Key came to his aid. Soaring all the way to the center of the ring, connecting with the double stop, as that Lethal tagged back in. Lethal did not have much time on the outside to recover. Will tonight finally be the night that Jay Lethal scores a pitfall on Homicide or Low Key? He's doing his best here in Chicago. Chop at the chest of Homicide. 
Reversal by Homicide. He catches him in the back. Ace Crusher! Lethal kicks out. You gotta admire the heart of this kid. Homicide looking to follow up, holding down across the back. Lethal struggles up to his feet. Homicide with a waist lock. Go behind by Lethal. Dragon, Dragon, suplex. Dragon suplex. No. That blow from Homicide. That was a warning from the official. Right into the power slam from Samoa Joe. Shoved Jay Lethal out of the way and nailed Homicide with a power slam. And Lethal looking to climb up top. Could be looking for that headbutt. And he gets it. But Cover she... that man. Cover him. Hooks the leg. He gets his shoulder up. Joe going for the leg kick and winds up connecting with the barricade as Loki was able to move out of the way. He also got that chair up and connecting with the back of Joe. And Zagiri inside the ring from Homicide on lethal. He tags himself in. Samoa Joe on the floor. Jay Lethal's gonna have to go alone for a bit here. Hard chop from Key. Make it a second. Kobashi like series of chops across the chest of Jay Lethal. Sends him off the ropes, ducks down. Sets a little too early. Sunset flip by Lethal. Double stop! He kicked out! He kicked out! He can't believe it! Jay Lethal staying in this matchup. Joe struggling to try and get to the apron. Lethal has got to make the tag, though. Low key, very focused, backs Jay Lethal into the corner. Yeah. Oh. Follows him into the corner with a clothesline. Rolls him down to the canvas, Key going up top. Lethal staying on his back inside the ring. Big elbow off the top. Cover. Kicks out once again. Oh, he just kicked the ref in the face. Again, it doesn't really matter if there's a referee in the ring between these two men. They just want at each other. It's not about a wrestling match to them. We saw that last night in the singles match between Key and Lethal. We're seeing it right here in this tag team match. Homicide again, knocking Joe to the floor. Lethal's trying to fight back. Double axe handle to the top of the head of Samoa Joe as Lethal fights his way back, trying to make his way to the corner, but there's no Samoa Joe to tag, even if he can make it there. Homicide biting away on Samoa Joe's head as Lethal chops away at the chest of Loki. Reversal by Key. Throw first into the second rope, he goes. Double stop! Jay Lethal draped across the middle rope. Low key connects with the double stop. Pulls across for the cover. He might have it. He only get his foot on the ropes. Meanwhile, Homicide and Samoa Joe still battling. They take the action out to the floor. Joe was not going to make it in time to break up that cover, but somehow Lethal able to make it to the ropes. Homicide to the second turnbuckle with Samoa Joe. Thumb to the eye. Looking for that DDT. The attempt thwarted by Joe. Running drop kick in the corner from Loki. Lethal back up. Looking for the Dragon Suplex. Dragon, he gets it. Cover. Homicide oh, just over the rail. Oh, come on. And the referee is calling for the bell. Jay match is going to be thrown out too. Lethal's denied the victory again. He had no key beat. He's denied the chance at beating one of these guys once again because they put their hands on the official.
five, six years ago, a wrestling school in Chicago existed called the Steel Domain. Myself and a partner want to open up a place to teach kids, break them in the right way, you know, teach them how to do things right in the business. And let's condense the story a little bit to two guys, two of my trainees. One guy comes in fresh off a football scholarship, plays one year, he's done. He's looking to wrestle, natural athlete. Another guy comes in, sort of a pseudo icon in a small little part of Chicago at a suburb, barely even known. But the kid's fat, he's dumpy, he's pear shaped, he doesn't look good at all. Professional wrestling, <laughs> my God, what is this kid thinking? He's got charisma though. So we put these two kids together in the ring. They're wrestling week in, week out, never miss a practice. What happens is a friendship, it forms, these two kids bond. They're looking at making a career out of professional wrestling. <laughs> good, good luck, kids. So what, what do we do? We tell them, do what we didn't do. Play off the mistakes that we made. Go out there every single weekend, every booking you can grab, grab it. Make no money, make a little money if you can, work your way up. Work for nothing, work for videotapes, whatever you can do. What do these kids do? They take heed, they take our advice every single week and they go out, they go out there. And every single week and they come back with stories of the road trips and they're loving it. One kid's still in college, the other guy's working a regular job, but one thing that's the same and a common ground with them is they both had desire and they both had the want. Let's fast forward to present day. One guy, the natural athlete, he's across in Europe and they've named shows after him, weekends after him. Holy crap. Marketing degree this kid's got. He's selling CDs of this guy, that guy. He's selling Lucha Mass, this guy. Marketing genius, he's making his bucks. The other guy, <laughs> he's doing dark matches for the Fed. Unbelievable, the pear shape is gone. Works out harder than anyone I've ever met in my life. This kid wanted it. Promo ability, the charisma's there. My God, you would not believe it. You would not believe that these are the same two guys that walked in and butted heads. I've taught these kids just about everything that I know, just about everything. And seriously, it's like watching your two kids go at it. And I don't know if I want to cry, I want to laugh. I know I just want to observe. Rather than, and in case you didn't figure it out, I'm talking about Punk and Cabana. Are you guys that stupid? Punk and Cabana tonight, you got a singles match. You started ROH in a singles match. That's how the booker heard of you. That's how people around the United States heard of you. And that's how you were booked out for the longest time. For six months, Cole Cabana was winning matches. For six months, CM Punk was winning matches. One guy's getting more promo time than the other one. Could have been some jealousy going on. I don't know, but you know what? One fall is not gonna decide this thing. No, no, any given night, any given person can take one fall. It's three seconds of your life. It could be a submission. It doesn't matter. It could be a screw up. One fall will not decide this. Tonight, I want two out of three falls and I'm gonna sit back with the rest of you people and there's not gonna be a dry eye in the house. CM Punk, Cole Cabana, two out of three falls, Chicago Ridge. Let's see it happen. Let's watch history be made.
Warrior Tag Team Championship on the line as P.J. Whitmer and Jimmy Jacobs to defend against Spanky and your new ROH World Champion after last night in James Gibson. Gibson and Spanky going for Tag Team Gold. Spanky the first one to congratulate Gibson on that win last night and also the first one to challenge him. Tonight it's all about the tag team titles though. But Gibson, uh, even though he knows that he's headed back to the WWE as a spanky there on Bob Paul time here in Ring of Honor, uh, he's basically the opposite of what we saw from CM Punk, who wanted to leave Ring of Honor as champion, show no respect to the title. But Gibson, he's all about staying here, representing the company as a fighting champion and competing in Ring of Honor as long as he still has that title around his waist. Yeah, he has vowed to stay here until he loses that belt. Spanky wants to be the one to take it off of him. The first one to challenge him, like he said, best friends outside the ring. He couldn't be more happy for James Gibson if it was himself winning the title. But like you said, he's never won gold here in Ring of Honor, and he wants to taste that gold before he makes his way back to the WWE. And this is a good opportunity for James Gibson to become a double champion, holding the world title as well as the tag team titles here in Chicago Ridge. E.J. Whitmer pulls over Spanky with the shoulder tap. Up and over. Nice leap frog by Spanky. Look at the quickness with the jump drag. He's grabbing hold of the head to follow up. Such an emotional scene last night. That top rope tiger driver from Gibson coming back after that vicious beating. Spanky running out there, first one in the ring to congratulate him. Amazing, amazing scene here in Ring of Honor with our new champ. Both Spanky and James Gibson uh, have made no bones about it that uh, when they made their way to Ring of Honor here in 2005, of course Gibson making his debut and Spanky making his return, uh, that they were both out for championships. Gibson did his best to go after the pure title, to go after the world title. It eluded him for so long, he finally achieved his goal, and tonight, uh, forming their tag team, their friendship is stronger than ever, and it's almost on their side here tonight against Jacobs and Whitmer. Could be a little bit of destiny playing in hand here. Spanky trying to follow up his best friend with some gold here, but B.J. Whitmer is not going to be an easy customer to do business with. Spanky, though, up and over, out of the hammerlock, rolls him up. Well, Wimber and Jacobs have shown just what kind of a tag team they are. They, they've had several victories in defending those tag team championships against the Embassy, against the Second City Saints, against Lacey's Angels. Uh, and they have several excellent tag team maneuvers, double team maneuvers in their repertoire to put away uh, the challenging teams. And Gibson and Spanky, two of the very best uh, athletes in the business today, uh, are going to give it their best shot here tonight. Gibson driving the elbow into the shoulder there of B.J. Whitmer, trying to neutralize the size advantage of the big man here, taking him off his feet and working a body part. He's got that arm control right there in the center of the ring as Jimmy Jacobs still on the outside is yet to make his way into this matchup. First, it's important to note that this matchup uh, for Gibson and Spanky to get a tag team title shot here in Chicago Ridge was signed before Gibson won the world title last night. Or else you better believe it, he would have defended that world title tonight if he wasn't scheduled for this tag title shot. He's vowed, like you said, to be a fighting champion. He'll take on all comers, and he will defend that title to the best of his ability against anybody that always sees fit to put in the ring with him. He said last night was the highlight of his wrestling career. And this is a guy who's been to WrestleMania, what most people will consider to be the pinnacle of this business. But to him, winning the world title in Ring of Honor is the most important thing he's ever done in his career. Gibson getting the better end of that exchange, holding onto the arm and barring it. As you may recall, back at Nowhere to Run here in Chicago Ridge last time, it was Gibson defeating B.J. Whitmer in the opening contest. And of course, that was a great match. Spanky has defeated Jimmy Jacobs in the past. So again, almost edge to the challengers in this particular contest. Gibson able to make Whitmer tap out in that match. Drops the leg across the arm at Jimmy Jacobs. He is going to work here on the arm. Crowd hustling along to encourage Jimmy Jacobs to get back to his feet. As Gibson backs himself into his own corner and Spanky tagged in. Double team maneuver here, they send him off. Double hip toss, take him off his feet. Drop kick by Spanky takes him down. Hip toss by Gibson takes Whitmer down, and a drop kick from Spanky rocks him but doesn't take him off his feet. Double drop kick sends him almost. There he is out to the floor. Rock and roll, baby. 
The challenger's looking good as they both hit the ropes and both go soaring. Whitmer crashing into the guardrail. Jacobs to the floor. Things going all the way to the challengers here early on. Spanky pitches Jimmy Jacobs back inside the ring. As is usually the case, Jimmy Jacobs the smallest uh, competitor in this particular tag team matchup. But he's got a lot of fight in him. He's got a lot of heart. And he compliments B.J. Whitmer so well in what they do in the ring. You know, nearly a near perfect tag team when you think about it. You got the size of B.J. Whitmer, the speed and agility of Jimmy Jacobs. They complement each other so well. That is why they are two-time ROH tag team champions together. And Whitmer, a four-time tag team champion, is over it. And Hard slam there by Gibson. Jacobs and Whitmer often utilize a strategy that you don't see too frequently in professional wrestling where one man, the larger person on the tag team, B.J. Whitmer, will put his smaller partner to use as almost an offensive weapon, tossing him into the opponents to do damage. It's been an effective strategy on their part thus far. Fortunately, Jimmy Jacobs is not one to mind putting his own body on the line to do damage to his opponent. And that comes in this, that strategy comes into play in that very situation right there. Thank you, tagged back into the matchup as they have Jacobs Back into the corner, chopping away at the chest. Jacobs trying to fight his way out of the corner. Work his way over to Whitmer. Got a boot right across the throat. Puts a stop to that. Thank you, grabbing a handful of hair. Dragging Jacobs out of the corner. Fires him into the turnbuckle. Forearm shot to Jacobs in the corner. Referee counted, trying to get him out of the corner. Spanky's gonna fire him off. Jacobs though up and over. Spanky crashes into the turn, puts in a spear. Drives Spanky down to the canvas. Jacobs needs to tag out. Get Whitmer in the ring, a fresh man, and the power of the team of the champions. Jacobs makes the tag to Whitmer. Drives a forearm into the face of Gibson and Spanky. Takes Spanky down. To the midsection, he's gonna fire Gibson out to the floor. Forearm shot from Spanky. Whitmer reverses the whip. Elevates him. Spanky able to take him off his feet. Runs up the chest of Whitmer, ducks the clothesline. Cross body up the second top and hooks the leg. Only a two count. Great agility shown by Spanky looking for slice bread number two. Whitmer puts on the brakes and drops him down with the neck breaker. Driving the back of the head of Spanky into the canvas and he rolls to the floor. Hold, hold on, I, I got already our producer in my earpiece. Come on, Jamie, come on. Gibson's first now. title defense has been signed for next week at Night of the Grudges 2. It will be Gibson defending against Homicide next week. Unbelievable, what a matchup that's going to be. Whitmer hooks the legs. Spanky right next to the ropes, though, able to break it before even a count of one. Way too close to the ropes. He's got to pull him into the center of the ring. Jacobs puts that furry boot up on the top turnbuckle and tags himself back into the match. Brown getting behind Jacobs again. Hussing in approval. Tomahawk chop right across the forehead. Come on, Spank! Driving Spanky down to a knee. Another neck breaker. Going right back to work on the neck of Spanky. Of course, last night they put the Super Contra code off of the shoulders of B.J. Whitmer to use to uh, retain the Tag Team Championship against Chad Collier and Nigel McGuinness. Focusing on the neck of Spanky, that could be their strategy to set up for that very maneuver here tonight. A series of elbows to the back of the neck of Spanky, already doing damage. Again, only a two count, though Spanky able to kick out. They also like to put the Doomsday Rana to use, which also can jar the neck upon impact. Twisting away on the neck of Spanky. The Spanky supporters getting behind him here. Crowd very evenly split behind both these teams. Spanky, he's got the mouth, he had his mouth on the head, he was biting. Hey, Jimmy Jacobs has been known to get barbaric on occasion as well. Whitmer back into the matchup, chopping away at the chest of Spanky. 
him off the ropes. Running forearm takes Spanky off his feet. Hooks the leg. Come on! And here Gibson encouraging his partner. To continue fighting here. Nice snap suplex from Whitman. Very quick with the cover. Still only able to get a two count. They haven't softened Spanky up enough yet to get that three count. And much like the team of Spanky and Gibson cut Jacobs off from his corner during the early part of this matchup, now the champions have cut Spanky off from his partner in James Gibson on the apron. Nice tag team strategy right here. Both men going to work. And there we see Whitmer putting Jacobs to use as an offensive weapon, assisting him on that splash across the chest. And Gibson in to break up the penalty. Come on, Spanky! Jacobs on, hanging on to the foot of Spanky again, isolating him from his partner. Driving an elbow again to the back of the neck of Spanky. Continuing to focus their offense on the neck of Spanky here. Who's now finally up to his feet. Driven back down with a headbutt by Jacobs. Spanky continues to fight. He has to make a tag though. Jacobs keeping hold of the head of Spanky as he tries to work his way toward his corner to make that tag. But Jacobs very smartly keeps him down on the canvas, holding onto the head and keeping Spanky away from Gibson. Also driving his own body weight across the shoulders of Spanky, forcing him to carry Jacob's own weight as well, cutting off some of that oxygen. Again, it's going to slow him down as this match wears on. Spanky, though, trying to use some power and force his way to the corner. And he's planted. He just got spiked right on top of his head. Trying to use the leverage for his own advantage, and it cost him. But he gets his shoulder off. Jimmy Jacobs just driving the head of Spanky into the canvas. Back to the front face lock, Whitmer tags in. Kicking away at the rib cage. Gibson has been on the apron a long time here. Spanky has got to find a way to make it to his corner. Hard chop to the chest and a forearm shot. Spanky fires back. Spanky trying to fight his way over to Gibson, reaching for the tag, but not quite. Whitmer drives him into the turnbuckle. Strength of BJ Whitmer, too much for Spanky to overcome right there. Whitmer drew, looked like he was trying to draw Gibson in. Tornado DDT and uses Jimmy Jacobs as a stepping stone. Needs to make the tag, Gibson wants in. These fans encouraging Spanky to crawl toward his corner and tag in his partner. Men struggling to try and get to their feet. Spanky's up first. Rolls to his corner, makes the tag to the one champ. Knocks Jacobs off the eight. Neck breaker on Whitmer. Driving the knee to the side of the face of BJ Whitmer. He's out of the way of that running knee. Trying to get the front guillotine choke. Whitmer trying to use his power to drive Gibson into the turnbuckle. Look at the tenacity of Gibson, though. He won't let go. Holding on to that head and trying to get the leverage, but Whitmer right into a northern lights. And again, Holds Gibson on. hangs on. This could be it right here. We're going to have new tag champs. Jacobs makes the save. Spanky nails Jacobs and sends him to the floor. Gibson trying his best to become a double champion and earn the tag team championship for him and his partner. Whitmer looking to follow up. Trying for to go the exploder. For the exactly, he's trying to go for that exploder, but Gibson able to fight his way out with an elbow, but gets caught anyway, coming off the rope by Whitmer. Whitmer looking to follow up. Looking for a scoop and a slam. Spanky though with a drop kick off the top. Here's a cover. No, not quite enough. Jamie! Tremendous teamwork by Gibson and Spanky here. Come here, brother! Gibson firing away with forearms and elbows. What a flirt. Spanky reaching his hand out for the tag. Gibson tags. Double team strategy from the challengers. Whitmer ducks the double clothesline. Jacobs grabbed the hold of Gibson. Spanky gets caught by Whitmer. Plants the boot to BJ's midsection. A reversal by Whitmer, though. Has him up. Spanky, though, with a reverse roll. He just spiked him on top of his head. We're going to have new tanks right here. Jimmy Jacobs in to break it up. Now Spanky going to work on 
Him down with the neck breaker. Third or fourth time they've been able to hit a neck breaker on Spanky. Gibson trying to make his way back to his corner. Can Spanky make his way over there and tag his best friend? Jacobs tagged in. Yeah. Going to work on Spanky in the corner. This is the crowd behind Jacobs here. Hard-fought battle for the Tag Team Championship here in Chicago Ridge. This match going back and forth. Both teams unable to sustain an advantage for very long. Whitmer, the legal man. Double team maneuver here. Send him off the rope. Take him off his feet. Let's Gibson to the floor. Jacobs off the ropes. And again, using his partner as a weapon, power bombs Jacobs into a senton. But Spanky kicks out. Whitmer telling Jacobs to go up. Could be the doomsday Rana. He's getting him up on his shoulders. He's setting him up for it right now. No, into a victory roll. Spike Buster by Gibson. Oh, almost had him with the victory roll. Spanky back to his feet, gets chopped down with the clothesline. And a big boot for Gibson. Jacobs on the floor. BJ Whitmer going at it with Spanky here. Forearm shots to the face. Goes for the roaring elbow and he gets planted. Face first down in the canvas goes Whitmer. Spanky needs to crawl toward his corner. Tagging James Gibson here. And he does. Gibson going up to the top. Drives the knee to the forehead of Whitmer. And another running knee to the face knocks him down. Tiger driver! Spanky! I know he wants to be the world champ, but not like this! Oh, and, and he just cost James Gibson the opportunity of the, of the tag team titles. Spanky just threw away his friendship with James Gibson over a belt. And this is what the ROH title means to these men.
They lock it up here, Roderick Strong and Matt Hardy, and it looks like the Embassy will not be a factor in this one, Dave Prezak. Well, Generation Next putting a stop to any outside interference that could be possible from the Embassy. It is going to be one-on-one, -on -one. a great opportunity for Roderick Strong here against an established competitor in professional wrestling in Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy undefeated so far here. His last match in Ring of Honor, he doesn't want to go home with a, with a loss under his belt. He's 2-0 so far. He wants to make it a perfect 3-0, but Roderick Strong is going to do everything he can to take him out. Hardy made his way to Ring of Honor because he admired the level of competition that the members of the roster bring inside that ring. And he wanted to see just how he would fare against the talent in ROH. He's getting a first-hand look at what Roderick Strong brings to the table. And he got a look at Christopher Daniels and Homicide in his first two matches. Able to defeat Homicide with a help, helping hand from Jay Lethal at the end of that matchup as he was returning the favor was Jay Lethal to Matt Hardy, who helped him at the end of his match against Low Key. Failing to back from Roderick, but Matt Hardy hangs on to the side of him. Very tenacious holding on to that headlock. Matt Hardy uh, wanting to compete with no limitations, get back to the grassroots of wrestling, and really show what he can do in front of a crowd like the ROH fans. That is very appreciative of hard work inside that ring. Both men with their fair share of support here. The crowd seemed pretty split early on. Big shoulder block from Matt Hardy. Strong goes down hard. Up and over Hardy. Quick arm drag though from Roderick. Takes Hardy right off his feet. Referee Paul Turner checking on the condition of Matt Hardy. Trying to work his way back to a standing position and he does. Gotta wonder how Matt Hardy's gonna react the first time he feels one of those chops from Roderick Strong or one of those backbreakers. You're talking about a guy who's been in with some of the biggest and strongest in the business in Matt Hardy. But what's he gonna do when he gets in there with the heaviest hitter in Ring of Honor? Matt Hardy knows what Roderick Strong's all about. Before he even made his way to active ROH competition, he was keeping his eye on the competition. He was watching the DVDs and he admired the product. So you know, he's a student before he even gets in the ring with someone like Roderick Strong. Strong hanging on to that hammerlock, Hardy up to his feet. Trying to make his way to the ropes. You'll notice that Matt's getting a much better reaction from the ROH fans than his brother Jeff did back at the first death before the song. That is absolutely correct. Jeff Hardy did not distinguish himself in his brief foray into Ring of Honor. Roderick still controlling the arm. Arm drag, but again, Roderick hangs on to that left arm. Of course, as much as people might have said that James Gibson is the MVP of 2005, a strong case can be made that Roderick is really the MVP this year. He's had some stellar matches up and down the ROH events during 2005, you know, against Punk at Escape from New York and The Future is Now. Two very memorable matches that many would argue put Roderick Strong on the map as a potential major player in the future here in ROH, a potential main event star. Match against Gibson at the Best of the American Super Juniors Tournament. At, a, at Fate of an Angel against AJ Styles. Roderick Strong has really been putting in strong showings. And he's taking it to Matt Hardy right here as they make it into the ropes. A clean break from Matt Hardy. Strong well, more than holding his own here with Matt Hardy in the early going. Had some excellent tag team matches. Teaming with Jack Evans against PJ Whitmer and Jimmy Jacobs at Manhattan Mayhem. Singles match against Steve Carino, third anniversary celebration, part one. Singles with Alex Shelley at New Frontiers and the final showdown. But the thing is, as much as Roderick Johnson putting on strong matches, uh, he's got a lot more losses under his belt than wins. He needs to start getting on the winning side of things. And he's doing his best as he chops away at the chest on Matt Hardy. Did you see the face on Matt Hardy after that first chop from Roderick Strong? Feeling just how hard he hits. He had the look on his face like I have never been hit that hard before in my life. And Hardy's firing back. Not backing down from the chops of Roderick Strong. Not backing down, but trying to get away. Get some space between him and Strong, who is just tenacious as all hell, and again just firing. And he 
just chopped the ring post. You hear his hand just smack against the steel. He might have broken his hand right there. He chopped so hard, he hit the steel. He may have broken his hand. And Hardy drives the shoulder into the ring post. And again, trying to dislocate that shoulder. Well, like you said, Matt Hardy wants to walk away from ROH undefeated. And he knows what Roderick Strong brings to the table. He can work over that arm. Gives him the advantage as he drops the leg down across the throat. You said he scouted the opponents he was going to face here in Ring of Honor. He's watched tapes. He's checked out the DVDs. He knows Roderick Strong wants to utilize his 250,000 backbreakers and the variations thereof that he applies. And with only one arm, he's not going to be able to apply those to Matt Hardy. So he is effectively taking away a large portion of the offense of Roderick Strong by working on that arm. He's off the second with the elbow. Goes for the cover, but Roderick kicking out. Still to come, we have that matchup between CM Punk and Colt Cabana. Punk's final stand here in Chicago tonight. Neckbreaker on strong by Hardy. Only a two count. First, you can even look at the full impact pro matches that Roderick Strong has had, uh, even outside of Ring of Honor. Taking on Samoa Joe, Tony Mamaluke, Brian Danielson, having excellent showings against all three of those men. Absolutely. Anytime you see Roderick Strong's name on the card, you are guaranteed to have a tremendous matchup. But like you said, sooner or later, the potential has to catch up with the results. He needs to put together some wins to elevate himself into the upper echelon of Ring of Honor in this roster. Roderick off the ropes. Hardy drop kicking that leg, taking away all of Roderick's momentum. Roderick struggles up to his feet. That leg obviously bothering him again. Chop block from behind, right to the back of the knee. You know, back at the future is now that memorable match against CM Punk. Uh, after the match, CM Punk sort of pointed out to the fans, you know, don't chant for him and be appreciative that CM Punk made a lot of contributions to Ring of Honor. Focus on the future and focus on what Roderick Strong, what people like, like him bring to the table for ROH's future here. Tonight might be Punk's last night, but we're getting a glimpse at the future at the top of the card here in Ring of Honor. Pain in the figure four leg lock, forcing the shoulders down to the canvas for a near fall there. Strong firing to the top of the head of Hardy, trying to get out of this hold here. Goes to the eyes. We've seen Matt Hardy use the ring post earlier. Now he's going to the eyes. Like we said earlier, he does not want to leave here with a loss on his resume in Ring of Honor. He wants to get out of here 3-0, and he will do whatever it takes to put Roderick away here. Matt Hardy is very proud of his association with Ring of Honor, even if it is only for three shows. You know, going so far as to mention ROH on Raw on the microphone. Reversal by Strong here, trying to turn him over. Hardy fighting it, but he makes it to the ropes. Referee Paul Turner trying to force a break, and he gets it. Roderick turning over to his stomach, putting all the pressure on the legs of Matt Hardy in that hold. Hardy couldn't take it, had to make it to the ropes. Cross over the leg, and Zagiri connects. Like Hardy was going for a dragon screw. Roderick able to connect with the Enzo Guri and get a little space between him and Hardy. That leg is obviously bothering Strong here, though. Four arm shots in the face. Up underneath that attempt and places Roderick up top. Open hand strike to the back. Is it up with a forearm. Looks like he's setting him up for Splash Mountain here. Nails it! Kicks out, right in the middle of the ring. You notice how he walked out of the corner and right to the center before dropping him down so the ropes couldn't have saved him. He had to kick out. The veteran ring generalship right there, knowing where you are and more importantly where your opponent is in the ring at all times. Trying to take away the advantage Roderick would have had being near the ropes to break that pinning predicament. Just making Roderick kick out. Waiting for him to turn around. Roderick catches him. Back breaker right over the knee. I wonder how much damage was done.
Alexander Roderick, though. Matt Hardy has been working on the leg of Strong with that figure four for a while. How much effect did that backbreaker have on Hardy? And also how much damage did it do to Roderick as well? Another hard shot from Strong. Just lighting up Hardy in the corner. And a good portion of these fans here in Chicago are loving it. Butterflies the arm. Takes him over with the suplex. Didn't hook the leg, only a two count. You can see Roderick still favoring that leg. Even when he tries to stomp at Hardy there, comes up hobbling. And putting pressure on the neck, as well as the arms of Matt Hardy, almost like a Cole Nelson applied with the legs. And rolls the shoulders down to the canvas, but only gets two. Couldn't put as much of his weight down on Hardy's shoulders to keep them pinned to the mat. Look at that spring, though, from the drop kick. Saw the damage done to the legs earlier, he was still able to get up and plant one on the chin. Oh, two and a half. When we talk about how much Roderick Strong needs to start getting victories, what a big victory it would be if he could do the unthinkable and defeat Matt Hardy, put a stop to his undefeated streak here in Ring of Honor. This would most certainly be the biggest win of his young career here in Ring of Honor if he is able to defeat this guy before he leaves Ring of Honor and goes back to the WWE. But Hardy is fighting with everything he's got. And Strong cuts him off with a clothesline. Cover! No, he kicks out. Gotta hook the leg, Roderick. Matt Hardy feeling the effects. Roderick trying to stay on his feet, limping around. Looking for the vertical suplex. Is he able to hold him up there with that bad leg? Apparently he is. Trying his best. Trying his best to work through that injury. All the blood rushing to the head of Matt Hardy. And finally he's taken off his feet. And Roderick's feeling the effects on that leg. No, he kicks out. Just putting that pressure on that leg, holding Hardy upside down like that for the delayed vertical suplex, put a lot of strain on the leg of Roderick Strong. Crowd starting to get behind Roderick here as he has a handful of hair on Matt Hardy and drags him up to his feet. Another chop across the chest. Listen to the impact of that chop as he takes Matt Hardy right off his feet. See the power of Roderick Strong drives him into the turnbuckle. Inverted DDT from Hardy. Both men down here in the center of the ring. Whoever gets to their feet first is going to have an advantage here. Double count administered by Paul Turner. Very physically taxing matchup on both competitors. Roderick falls to the corner to help himself up. Hardy was beating the center of the ring, charges into the corner, and drives the forearm into the face of Strong, and a bulldog out of the corner. Hardy might have him here, hooks the leg. No, Roderick able to hang in there. Hardy yet to go for the twist of fate here. Roderick fires a right hand. It's on the brakes, does Hardy. Sleeper hold. Turns it around, belly to back suplex. Nice escape from the sleeper hole by Strong. Good maneuver by Hardy there, this late in the match when you've got your man ward down. The sleeper is very effective at this point in the match. But unable to connect as Strong was able to hit that belly to back. Again, relentless with the chops is Roderick Strong. And that's precisely what he needs to do. Again, he sets him up on the top. Forearm shots to the chin. Roderick's gonna follow him up. Hardy trying to fight out of this position. Right hands from Roderick, almost lost his balance there. That knee's still giving him problems. He's going up to the top though. Looking for the superplex. Hardy with shots to the rib cage, and Roderick falls down onto the canvas. Hardy with a smirk on his face. Coming down to the second rope. I've been looking to hit that second rope leg drop. But Strong able to get to his feet and fire a shot to the midsection. Right. 
and setting Hardy up. Not for the superplex this time. What could he have in mind? He's got him up, trying to get him on his shoulders here. Hardy with elbows to the side of the head of Strong. Again, sends him down to the canvas. And I wonder if Roderick was able to hold him up on his shoulders with the damage done to that knee. Swinging DDT. No, Strong kicks out. Hardy just mocking the fans now. Chanting strong, strong, strong. Hardy, 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 those arms and Roderick drives him into the turnbuckle. And again. Or the lights. No. Two and a half again. Hardy able to kick out. Even the Northern Lights suplex like that. Doing more damage to the back of Matt Hardy in combination with the backbreakers. Trademark Roderick Strong. Comes roaring and sends it down. Hardy going for the cover. Roderick kicks out. So both men starting to slow down a bit here as the offense from each is starting to take its toll on the other now. And Hardy waiting for Roderick to get back to his feet. Now pulling him up. Going for the twist of fate. That could be it. He kicks out. Roderick's got him up. him in. Can't get him with the sunset flip. Schoolboy! Boston Crab cinched in by Roderick Strong. That puts even more strain on the back of Matt Hardy. Look at Matt Hardy. He is having all sorts of trouble just getting to his feet. Roderick Strong whipping. That knee still giving him trouble. Both of these men putting it all on the line. Hardy blocks the suplex and drives the knee to the midsection. Locks in that guillotine choke. Referee checking to see if he, if he needs to give it up here. Roderick Strong is right in the center of the ring with nowhere to go. He makes the ropes. Both men very worn down from this matchup. And really feeling the effects. Matt Hardy, the first one back to his feet. Really favoring that back that Roderick has picked apart. Dragging Roderick up to his feet. Roderick fights him off with an elbow. Half Wilson looking for the backbreaker. Hardy shoved him off. Mule kick catches him coming in. Springboard crossbody, nobody hold. Hardy back to his feet. Needs to capitalize. Strong looking, back up. Could be looking for the twist of fate here. That's it. One, two, two and a half again. 
Charlotte able to kick out, and Matt Hardy is starting to get frustrated. Going for it again. And even connecting with that maneuver, it charged his own back, doing damage to his opponent. But Ryder with the shoulder up again. Roderick Strong digging down deep to kick out one more time. Matt Hardy really having to earn his paycheck here in Chicago Ridge. Looking to follow up. Vertical suplex, no. Roderick blocks it. Couldn't get him up because of the pain in the back.
And we are ready for the final chapter in CF Punk's Ring of Honor run versus classic Colt Cabana, his frequent tag team partner, frequent adversary, training partner, best friend. The main event here in Chicago Ridge, Illinois gets underway. And joining me at this time on commentary, the closer, Jimmy Bauer. Well, you, you better believe I'm going to sit here and call CM Punk's last Ring of Honor match. And I got to admit, uh, I'm tearing up right now. There's not a dry eye in the house. Their trainer, Ace Steele, sitting at the timekeeper's table, Samoa Joe, pulled up a chair to ringside to watch these two go at it. All the friends and family of both of these men in the crowd watching on here tonight as CM Punk says farewell to an organization that uh, he called home for the better part of the past three years. We have just over a thousand people here in Chicago to witness this match. The locker room, there's there's not a dry eye in the locker room either. You know, Punk's wreaked a lot of havoc in the last couple months here in ROH. When James Gibson pinned him last night, it was like that ego became immediately deflated. It was like the old Punk, the Punk that built this company came back. And, and now he's back for one final match here against Cole Cabana. And no, no better place to do it than right here in Chicago Ridge, Illinois, uh, right by where CM Punk got his start at the Steel Domain training facility in Chicago. Uh, these two men, uh, as Ace Steel mentioned earlier, uh, had some excellent matches with one another coming out of training, you know, across the independent scene, driving, you know, across the country to work for sometimes almost nothing, work for gas money, work for videotapes, etc. Uh, just to get that ring time, to get that experience to develop as wrestlers. And at a very young age, they developed into two of the very best in the industry and have both come a long way since making their way to Ring of Honor in late 2002. We have a clean break right there. Of course, Ace Steel making this two out of three falls. And I can't say that anyone's upset about that. Not at all. Fans here, uh, as I say, with James Gibson taking the belt off CM Punk last night in Dayton, uh, they did not see a main event world title match here tonight. Uh, so as a result, this match turned into a two out of three falls matchup. And it is very fitting uh, because Ace Steel wants to see who is the better man at this point in their career. Anybody can get a quick pinfall, a quick roll-up, maybe a submission, and get a fluke victory tonight. One of these men is going to have to defeat the other twice in order to walk away with his hand raised. So let's see if we got a Cole Cabana with his usual hijinks there as we get a clean break. And it's also fitting that this is two out of three falls because it was actually a two out of three falls match between Cole Cabana and CM Punk, and I believe St. Paul, that they sent to the ROH offices and now is a match that really gained the attention of ROH officials and led to these two being booked. Yeah, these two, uh, first time I saw them wrestle one another uh, in a singles contest was January 8th, 2000, up in West Dallas, Wisconsin, on an independent show, and they wound up taking their battles throughout the state of Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, up to Minnesota, uh, and finally made their way out to the East Coast shortly after uh, having what many considered to be their breakout match, a two out of three falls match in West St. Paul, Minnesota, uh, which they utilized uh, to springboard themselves into better opportunities across the wrestling scene that really show promoters what they bring to the table. And Ring of Honor was impressed with their abilities, gave them the stage to wrestle, and uh, after making their way to Ring of Honor, in retrospect, just to see how, how good they've turned into, uh, how much they've developed as wrestlers, how ridiculous is it that uh, one of them had to forfeit getting flown to shows early in their ROH career? Well, Ring of Honor <laughs> was quick to sign them up in 2002, in December 2002, that's what you were talking about. Final battle, 2002, Night of Butcher. They wrestled each other on those two shows. The remastered DVDs of those shows will be out within a month or two. And we have seen many clips of the history of Punk and Cabana in ROH during that Ace Steel promo, during Punk's ring entrance. Too much history to go over here. Of course, they are two-time ROH Tag Team Champions. So many great matches. Shoulder tackle, down goes Colt Cabana. Again, Colt gets the ropes the third time. Third time, Cabana goes down, back to his feet. And this time he trips the M Punk. Trademark Colt Cabana right there. Punk looking a little frustrated for the first time. That smile is off his face. Right into the arm drag. Cabana barring the arm of CM Punk. Yeah. Yeah. Cabana and Punk. 
so much history, and if you see the new straight shooting with CM Punk and Colt Cabana, they detail that whole history. In fact, Dave, it's time to pay the bills. But you know what? The, the heck with it. This, it's not fitting to do that in this kind of match. <laughs> a match like this is paying the bills because everybody has their eyes glued on this ring here in Chicago Ridge, and everybody watching on DVD as Punk kicks away at the legs of Colt Cabana. Elevates Punk off the canvas. Cabana had his shoulders down. And right into the body scissors. Wrenching away at the midsection of CM Punk. Cole Cabana was the one who defeated Punk in their first ever ROH match at Night of Butcher. Night of the Butcher. And whoever forget some of those promos with Punk and Cabana. I mean, absolutely hilarious stuff. All well, the personalities uh, definitely sh uh, shined during the course of uh, all the promos that both of them conducted. You know, good times, great memories. I remember Retribution Round Robin yes. Challenge 2. I mean, just so many memories. The, the two out of three falls match against the Briscoes. The Death Before Dishonor 2, Part 1. I'm going to try not to turn this into just going over all the great memories as we do have a match in the ring and a very important match at that. Cole Cabana with the side headlock. Sentinel Buckle puts on the brakes, rolls underneath the attempt by Punk, ducks the clothesline. Go for the head scissors. Cabana gets it. So much history between these two in Chicago. This is where they first defeated the Briscoes to win the tag team titles. At Reborn Stage 2. An and epic of course battle. That and definitely a good way to bring Ring of Honor into the Chicago market, having two hometown boys capture the tag team championship in the main event of that card. What a moment that was when Cole Cabana hugged CM Punk after that brutal steel cage match against Jimmy Rave last time in Chicago with nowhere to run. Who will ever forget that? Punk coming back for this last match in Chicago because he wanted to wrestle Cabana. Cabana sent to the ropes by Punk. Leapfrog from Punk. Step over by Cabana. Swings the elbow, but Cabana sends Punk into the ropes, going for the head scissors, and grabs hold of the arm on the way and takes Cabana over with the arm drag. Well, you know one thing is that all these, all of these two are friends, and we have this uh, such an atmosphere here. They both want the victory in this one because this could very well be the last time they ever wrestle. And they've wrestled each other so many times; they know each other so very well. It was an exchange just like that that I remember even seeing back in 2001 between these two. They can almost anticipate their opponent's maneuvers before they even go for it. No doubt, these two are like brothers. Another lock up in the middle of the ring. Punk with the side headlock on Cabana now. As now Punk into the wrist lock. Single handed knuckle lock. Driving the shoulder into Cabana's. And now chopping away at the neck. Brings Cabana down to the canvas, still holding onto the knuckle lock. Just kidding. <laughs> right now, Punk trying to wear down Cabana. Not encouraging these two men on. I gotta admit that it is difficult to call this match. Well, like A Steel said, it's like watching two of your kids, uh, you know, grow up, graduate college, move on with their life. We're seeing CM Punk move on. He accomplished everything that he set out to do in Ring of Honor. And the sky's the limit for his career right now. As now jockeying for position, Punk springboards off the second into the crossbody. Cabana back to his feet, into the arm drag from Punk, keeping hold of that arm. And you know, Cabana. Uh, Leaps and bounds improving in his own right. You know, wrestling more overseas as of late. Really stepping up his game here in ROH competition as well. Cabana, a huge star in the United Kingdom now. Todd Sinclair, your referee in this match. He was given the assignment of this very important match. Keeping that arm down on the canvas, drives the knee down into the arm. And you have to wonder how focused these two are on this match, you know? I mean, in the back of their minds, they have to be thinking this is the last time we're ever gonna dance. Leapfrog from Cabana, going for the monkey flip, and sends Punk all the way across the ring. Punk back to his feet, into the arm drag from Cabana. Head scissors by Punk, Cabana works his way out of it. Back to his feet, another arm drag from Punk. Another head scissors from Cabana. That was the applause of these fans. You know, I, I saw both Cabana's parents as well as Punk's parents in the crowd tonight here to watch their legitimate children uh, go at it while, while he still watches his students go at it. 
Uh, I mean, we got a thousand plus people in this building tonight to witness this match. Chicago wrestling history right here. You know, I, I'm just thinking back of, of remember when Punk walked out of the car with Colt Cabana back in December 2002? <laughs> I, it doesn't seem like that was 10 years ago. Yeah, and I think uh, Punk put it pretty well when we were uh, on the Death Before Dishonor 3 release, uh, when he was looking back at the old clips, and you know, he said that he looked like he was 12 years old in some of those clips. Yeah, it, it's hard to believe that it was only uh, a few years ago. Not encouraging Punk to work his way out of his head scissors. This crowd definitely here to cheer on both men. Cabana sweeping out the leg. The frog from Punk. Going for the monkey flip on Cabana, but he stomps away on the face of CM Punk. And a little bit of strutting from Punk Cabana. Ah, uh, there's that, there's that uh, fooling around by Cabana. Punk's beginning to look a little bit annoyed. Not appreciating the cockiness of Colt Cabana. That's kind of an ongoing theme between these two is Cabana and the joking around and Punk in the serious side. Something we've seen throughout their history here in ROH. Something I've seen since I met these kids. And into the side headlock goes Colt Cabana. Ask Esmo Joe at ringside about it. Took Punk's attention away, able to grab the headlock. So now it's Cabana into the ropes. Crisscross. Where is this going to stop? Punk refusing to fall for Cabana's tricks, but he's still able to stomp away at the front. Come on now. What's wrong? All your stupid British crap. Get me to try to look up. Just look what's Be doing. serious! Is your foot hurt? Yes. Is it hurt? Yes. I'm sorry. How are you? Oh, the other one. Oh! And again. Oh. And the referee with his back turned and Punk with a low blow on Cabana to get the upper hand. Telling him to get serious. And you know Colt Cabana, he's not going to get serious on CM Punk's request. Oh, this is the whole history between these two right here in that one moment. Perfectly summed up. And what's this? Going for the Colt 45, it looks like. Cabana's own trademark maneuver. Punk nails it. It's a pitfall. Punk winning the first ball after a low blow to Colt 45. Punk disgusted with the comedy antics of Colt Cabana. Something we've seen so many times between these two. Well, Punk wanted, wanted to have a good wrestling match here tonight in his final ROH outing. He didn't want this to be a big comedy show. Wow. This is a good times, great memories. This is what we've always seen between these two, so it should be no surprise to anyone. And very ironic because it was Cabana pinning Punk, Knight of the Butcher, their first ever ROH match with the Colt 45. And Punk now kicking away at the head of Cabana. He tries to work his way back to his feet. And now with him in the ropes. Sinclair demanding a break. Punk letting anger get the best of him. These two have been the best of friends, but they have also been the worst of enemies with each other, and we are seeing them as enemies right now. They bring out the best in each other, both as partners and opponents. I mean, you know better than anyone, Dave. They definitely had a love-hate relationship in the past. Vertical suplex from Punk, letting all the blood rush to the head of Cabana before dropping him down. And now Cabana better get serious and better start mounting a comeback, or he could lose this match two falls to none. And could you imagine that, the last match, losing two falls to none. Kicking away at the back of Colt Cabana. Punk very methodical here after gaining the first pinfall in this two out of three falls back. This crowd supporting both men as Cabana fights back. Chopping away at the chest of Punk, but a knee to the midsection from Punk. This isn't the usual match you see in Chicago from Punk and Cabana where they're usually against opponents that this crowd hates. Instead, this crowd loves both men. Much like uh, their parents, much like their trainers, much like everyone in the locker room, the fans here in Chicago have watched these two mature as athletes uh, across the independent scene here in Chicago over the years. And 
Seeing both of them improve is doing the Chicago fans proud that this region produced two athletes just like this. Submission in the ropes. Referee applies the count and pump releases before the count of five. And now waiting for Cabana to get back to his feet. Springboards into the drop kick. Again, Pump pulling out some of his old tricks. We got a cover. But Cabana able to get, able to get that shoulder up. I, I mean, now it's just beginning to really hit me, Dave, that, that this is the last time we're going to see CM Punk wrestle in Ring of Honor. And he's done so very much that it's almost, uh, we're proud to see him go. You know, it's a sad moment that this is going to be his last contest in a Ring of Honor ring. But, uh, uh, but we've seen so many great things out of him in the past that he's met I'm so proud to see him move on. Yep, he, he's met so much of this promotion behind the scenes, in the ring. I mean, a, a lot of fans don't realize what Punk has meant behind the scenes here in Ring of Honor, and it's hard to express in words. A true locker room leader as Cabana hits the buckle, and Punk comes soaring in with the elbow. Off the ropes he comes. Look at the clothesline, and takes Punk's head off with the lariat. Huge lariat right there. Cabana gets him. And we're tied at one ball piece. Cabana pulling out the huge lariat there. Very impressive. One second. Cool. And that was enough to put Punk down for the three count. Lockport one, Deerfield one. We're at a tie here in Chicago Ridge. And this is it, Dave. This is it. This is the last pinfall in the matchup. Who's going to come up with the victory between these two men? I mean, this is it for CM Punk and Ring of Honor, the man who's meant so much. Whether it's this feud with Raven, Ricky Steamboat, the Prophecy, the World Title Reign, the, the Samoa Joe Trilogy of matches, the, the absolutely legendary, so much this man has done in ROH. The, even here in Chicago, that street fight against Moff and Whitmer. Classic matches, brawls, hardcore, chain wrestling, technical wrestling, you name it, Punk's done it and he's done it with the best of them. And they're realizing this is it. Face to face they come in the center of the ring. Big chop from Punk. Cabana dishes it right back out. The spirit of competition showing through here. back asking Cabana to bring it on and he does forearm from Punk elbow from Cabana another forearm from Punk Cabana trying to shake off the effects series now forearm strikes from Punk block and now Cabana firing away on Punk Nice combination from Cabana, backs him into the corner now. Punk, up and over in the corner. Looking to time up in the ropes once again, but this time, Cabana releases him and Punk all the way out to the floor. Wasn't gonna get tied up a second time in the ropes. No way, and Punk blocking a possible seeing moonsault there from Cabana. Punk back inside the ring, leaving Cabana out on the floor. Punk hits the ropes! Throws underneath the bottom rope, looking for the baseball slide it looked like. Cabana, sunset flip to the floor attempt, Punk holding onto the ropes. Punk holding on for dear life right there. Kicking away at the head of Cabana. There's a cocky strut from Punk. Right into the Rana, on the floor! And that's a part of history between Punk and Cabana. From way back. It's hard to describe the atmosphere here in, in this building right now. This match is bringing back a lot of memories of past bouts between these two men over the years. You see, there's, there's fans actually tearing up in the crowd. Cabana, off the ropes he comes. Tilt the world backbreaker attempt. No, Cabana. Small package. No, only two. Both men back to their feet. Takes up the legs of Punk. Cabana now trying to roll him over in a Boston crowd. Punk trying to fight it off. Kicks off Cabana. Punk back to his feet. Cabana back up. Boot to the midsection. 
Looking to butterfly the arms of Cabana. Maybe a Colt 45 again or welcome to Chicago. Nope. To the gut. Looking for the Colt 45 himself. No. Butterfly sit out bomb. Who's going to go on the record books as the man that wins the final battle between Punk and Cabana? As you see, I, I, it's almost like, I don't want to say a funeral because it is a happy occasion celebrating the career of CM Punk, but it's definitely a strange atmosphere here in the Frontier Fieldhouse in Chicago as, as the fans realize this is it. This is it. European uppercut from Cabana has added that European's influence into his wrestling repertoire as of late. Has Punk by the arm, sends him into the buckle. Punk, head over heels in the corner, landing on the apron. Ducks the clothesline attempt. So does Cabana, springboard, and knocks Punk down to the apron and to the floor. Could Cabana go for that acai moonsault right here? He does! And he gets it! Both of these men taking risks for the sake of scoring that decisive pitfall in this match. You know, I'm so glad that we're seeing a competitive match like this out of Punk and Cabana. Punk coming right down to earth, having that eagle deflated when Gibson pinned him for the world title last night. I'm so glad we're able to see the real CM Punk here in this final ROH match. Crowd encouraging these two men on. As Cabana pulls Punk back up and pitches him back inside the squared circle. Both men taking a grueling beating in this match. Cabana slow to get back into the ring, trying to climb up to the top rope, going for a high impact maneuver. Very worn down, but Punk back to his feet himself. Firing away on Cabana. Chop across the chest. And once again, Cabana almost tumbling down to the timekeeper's table as Punk now all the way up top. Top rope, Rana. Sunset flip, he rolls all the way through, holds onto the legs into a Boston Crab. And Punk is gonna have to be an absolutely unbearable pain to tap away the final fall of this match. Cabana though doing a great time wearing down Punk. A great job, I mean. Referee checking on Punk's condition. Not quite in the dead center of the ring. If he can crawl toward that bottom rope to force a break of the hole, to alleviate all that pressure on his back. And he does make the ropes. Cabana releases. And Punk face first down on the canvas. Cabana with the advantage. Again, we're tied at one fall apiece. You see the eyes of these fans absolutely glued on the ring. And, and I mean, I, I don't even know how to describe this atmosphere. It's just so unique. As Samoa Joe looks down at ringside. Of course, that emotional trilogy against CM Punk in 2004, including Joe versus Punk 2 right here in Chicago. Cabana reverses the Irish whip. Punk off the ropes. Up on the shoulders of Cabana. Reverse Hurricane Rana right on his head. That could be it if Punk could go for the cover. That's not the first time you saw that out of these two Dave Brazak. Cover. No, Cabana with the shoulder up at two and a half. The best of friends, the worst of enemies. They're battling it out right now. They're like a married couple. Oh, nice combo from Punk. Off the ropes he comes. It connects with the knees. Come on. Almost like a shining wizard from a standing position. Both these men have taken a beating in this match and it could end at any moment with one big move. And the crowd showing their support for CM Punk. Cabana back to his feet, comes away at the back of Punk as a position on the top rope. Cabana now cradles the head and drives him down with an inverted DDT. Dangerous! He landed right on the back of his neck right there. Go for the cover. Hulk is out. Cabana though, very worn down, not able to follow up. Punk might not make it to WWE with moves like that. Double count administered by Todd Sinclair. This could be the end of a career. Both oh. them back to their feet. Cabana oh. with Punk reverses the whip. Thank God Punk got back to his feet and he's got the Anaconda Vice locked in. This could be it. 
One of Punk's trademark maneuvers these days. Along with the Pepsi plunge, the Anaconda Vice has finished off many men in an ROH ring. Well, you know Cabana has to be on the verge of death to tap right here and give the final fall to Punk. Cabana trying to maneuver his way to the ropes. Can Punk? No. He reaches the ropes and Punk must release the hole. Wow, so much emotion here in this building. It's just, Pepsi it's, it's, plunge! he's going for the plunge. Pepsi plunge! Pepsi plunge! It's a virtual Pepsi who's who in the Pepsi lives plunge! and the careers of these two men in terms of their friends, their families, their associates that are watching on as they battle one last time. And such a unique atmosphere here for this match. Going for the Pepsi plunge. He's got the arms butterflied. Has Cabana up to the second. Yes! Punk. Trying to get the maneuver, but Cabana trying to block. Oh, it's all over if he hits this. Cabana trying to, he fights out of it. He's got Punk up on his shoulders. What could he be looking for? Samoa drop off the ropes. This crowd voicing their appreciation, this tearful crowd boy. Oh, what's this? Crucifix pin attempt only gets two. These men have taken such a beating that it could end with a simple pinfall attempt like that. Both men feeling the effects of this battle thus far. Struggling to get back to a standing position. Both men back up. Pump fires away on Cabana. Cabana dishes it right back out. Both men Come staying on, on their feet. Come on, you motherfucker! Punk trying to encourage Cabana to fire up even more and bring out the very best in each other like they always do. Kicking away at the leg. Brings him down to one knee. Maybe looking for the Shining Wizard, but he stands back up. Brings him down to one knee again. Cabana stands back up. Punk trying to set up for that Wizard. Cabana knows that it's coming though. Off the ropes comes Punk and connects. He nails it. No, way too close to the ropes. Yep. Cabana knew where he was at, grabbed him with that bottom rope to break the pin attack. I thought Punk was going to try to pull him into the middle of the ring first, man. Perhaps Punk is too tired to do that. The fatigue really starting to show here, and don't forget, Punk was part of a 40-plus minute match just 24 hours ago. Punk now thinking out his next move. We're seeing a chess match in this ring as well. Vertical suplex, no. Cabana staying on his feet. Rolls back. No, no. rolls back. Leverage, back and forth they go. Cradle by Cabana. And that's three! Colt Cabana pins CM Punk with that roll up. Cabana pins CM Punk. He wins the matchup two balls to one. Dave, you gotta head to the ring. The locker room's gonna have you out to the ring right now. And I just gotta say, thank you for everything, CM Punk.
things to be happy in Jesus. There's one thing to bring about this is the family that everybody's equal in that lot. Nobody's better than anybody else. Get up, baby.